a muscle board, you say? All right. Hey guys, Gabby here from Rage Studios and today I'll be reviewing the Eoban Carbon GTS Super. First, let me say that Eoban sent me this unit for review, but they did not tell me what to say, neither they get to see this video before it goes online on my channel. Now, let's do a quick unboxing. The board came on a pretty large box. As soon as you open it, we can see an spare grip tape. By the way, this is shock absorption grip tape. And here it is, the Eoban GTS Super. The unboxing seems very premium. We have a few spare belts. Everything was nicely packed. We have metal pulleys. Take a listen at this. Now that's the sound of quality. We have a few spare bearings and washers. Even the tools look premium. This is not your average T-tool and Allen wrench. We have the charging cable for the remote and what we can call maybe a premium 4 amps charger with a pretty large fan. We also have a few stickers and the remote control. I don't know why they wrapped this in some plastic, but hey, here it is. And of course the instruction manual, which is very easy to understand since they have a lot of graphics. The wheels came in a separate box, both the rubber wheels 105 and the 175 mm wheels. It took me some around 5 to 10 minutes to put them on the board and it's not really that difficult. Anybody can do it. All tools included in the box. The deck is entirely made of carbon fiber in what they call maroon red. I'm gonna be honest here, I'm freaking loving it. How come nobody sort of that before? There are many carbon fiber decks in the market today, but this surely looks unique. The deck is very long, one of the longest on any AT board. If you've been following this channel, you probably heard me saying that I love long decks, since I like to ride with a very wide stance. Probably one of the heaviest two-wheel drives ESK that I tested. That's mostly due to the huge battery. I've been testing a lot of four-wheel drive AT boards recently that are even heavier, so I don't quite feel the weight as much on the EO1. The motors are high off the ground that make it easier to pull from the front tracks, even with the small wheels. The drop down and concave are very gentle. You can barely feel it, but it's there and give me enough feedback to know where my feet are without having to look down. We have shock absorption grip tape that helps reduce vibrations when riding over bad terrain. I don't particularly like the shape of this grip tape. It's not bad, but I've seen better. The logo is a bit too big, printed in the grip tape itself. It would have been better a smaller logo printed directly on the board itself, which will also show more of the beautiful carbon fiber. Even though this is packing a huge battery, the deck is really slick. They did such a great job on the design of this deck. It is very roomy and comfortable, and it is one of my favorites so far. The motors came in black and red, and it came with two sets of wheels, 105 Honeycomb rubber wheels and 175 AT pneumatic tires that are also red. At this point, I'm starting to get a bit of a red overload, <laughs> but don't worry, the wheels also come available with black rims. This is a muscle ball, of course it's very powerful. Dual belt motors with 7000 watts, capable of up to 60 km per hour. This falls in the category of performance boards. It can set at 50% acceleration and braking, and that feels plenty powerful. As you increase the power to 70 and 80, there is a big increase on power, but it became a bit more difficult to control. To be honest, we haven't even tried 100%, but we did try 100% brakes for drifting. You can easily lock wheels and drift, and it's a lot of fun. 
I guess being a muscle board dressing was a must. There are four gears or riding setups, low, dry, sports and race. You can customize acceleration and braking to each riding style very easily from the remote. I find myself riding most of the time in a sport mode at 45% acceleration and 40% braking for a more comfortable commute and have set the race mode to 65% acceleration and 70% braking for when I want to get some adrenaline. With the 105mm rubber wheels, I have a very low center of gravity, which is great for riding at high speed, and with 175mm wheels, it's a bit higher with enough clearance to go off-road. Talking about off-road, even so, I prefer four-wheel drive boards for this, the EO bands, can easily handle grass and trails without any issue. And it's a lot of fun to ride on any terrain. Both wheels comes with metal pulleys. Needless to say, outstanding quality. Same as everything else. The tracks are one of the highlights of this board double kimping tracks, same as most other 80 boards, but these, these are different. They're actually very stable and they also carve like butter, with 95A pushings and flat pushing washers. Are there to say, one of the best double kimping tracks I tested so far. I have mixed feelings about this ESC. It's highly customizable with a smart turn on, which can be set to up to 48 hours. But when it comes to acceleration and braking, I feel it's not as smooth and intuitive as Hobby Win or the new Fog ESC. It's not bad either, maybe I just need to get used to it. But when it's set to the highest speed, it's not easy to control. The remote control looks really nice. It kind of looks like a really cool knife handle. It's entirely made of plastic to keep it lightweight, and it has a small screen with color display with plenty of information. This is one of the nicest ESK remote control I review in this channel. You can access and change all settings directly from the remote very easily and on the go. It charges via USB Type-C and I noticed that it have a longer battery life between chargers. I really like this feature because I'm the kind of rider who always forget to charge the remote. With a Panasonic 860W 12S4P, we can call this a premium battery. It's amazing that they managed to fit this battery in such a slim deck. The range is more than generous. With the small wheels, I can get up to 46 km of range, which is very impressive. The same way I'm not willing to test full power in this board, I also not wanting to do a test range either. It will take forever. They included a big powerful 4 amps charger with a big fan that's a bit noisy but keep everything cool at all times. The charging port seems to be of dubious quality and it snap after a couple of charge cycles. Possible the only part on this board that we can consider not to be premium. Hopefully they adapt this in the future boards. In conclusion, this is a boutique board with premium specs and with a refreshing look. It might also fall into the performance category as well. I personally love the deck and the tracks. I'm not the kind of rider who will ride for long periods of time. So the range is not that appealing to me, but I think this board gives the best range on a carbon fiber deck. You should definitely get the Yoban Carbon if range is your priority. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet, and I'll see you on the next time. Alright, that's it. Adios amigos!